cucumber accents the water in such a way that... What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we are out testing the APSU board. Let me get this up here for you. This is the APSU X1. And this is the upgraded model. Um, this is, uh, it's been out for a little while. I must admit, I've had it for a little while. Um, the weather's been pretty crap and corona and everything. So today I'm gonna go out, we're gonna have our first ride on it. See how it performs. Now I did mention it's the upgraded model. I've got my phone here, I'm just gonna look at it. So it's the X1, it's $499 US. And that comes with, what, what's been changed, what's been upgraded, they've changed the motors. They've gone to a slightly smaller motor. The old ones were, um, a thousand watts I believe per motor and they've actually dropped these ones down to uh, 650 watts but they're a high torque um, perfect KV for the new ESC that they've put in so these are 5045 motors so 5045 650 watts times two actually the same motors that are on the Vestar Mini and that Vestar Mini flies it has amazing performance the other thing they've upgraded as I mentioned is I've upgraded the ESC so they've moved to a 40 amp Hobbywing ESC, which again will deliver fantastic performance. Um, they've changed the look of the board, it's a different logo, slightly fatter belts. I think that's about it. Um, now, the, old, the original X1, yeah, as I mentioned, 1000 watt motors uh, had a Lingy ESC, which I'm just not a fan of. Some people love them. I, I'm not a fan, they're just very unpredictable. It's very much on and off, there's no smooth curve. Um, yeah, not a fan. When they said they had put the Hobbywing, uh, the upgraded Hobbywing ESC in this with the 40 amps continuous um, power, I was very, very excited to try it out. Now the deck hasn't changed, it's still there very much the Vanguard clone. Um, the handle, the handle I'm not a fan of. I don't mind handles and boards, but this one has just hasn't been, I feel like it hasn't been shaped very well. I mean, it's comfortable and it's well balanced. It doesn't fall to the, it doesn't fall backwards or forwards. But um, I'm not a fan of the square handle. I think it needs to be a bit more rounded. Uh, what else can we say about the board? Um, this one is slightly different as well. So this has a 43 kilometer hour top speed. The other one I believe does 45. It's a tiny bit slower. But here's the kicker with this board. The standard battery. So for $499, the standard battery is a 10S 4P 8 amp hour. Now, <clears throat> I know as we go along and technology gets better and better and more and more budget boards or low cost boards into the market we're seeing better and better batteries you know we've gone from having 2.5 amp hours 4 amp hours i think the standard at the moment is around the 6 6.5 6 amp hour for a standard range battery this has got 8 amp hours standard which is huge so that should do really really nice range especially with these dual um belt motors not much more we need to say about it oh there is one thing there's an x2 someone asked me because i did a post on my community tab saying uh, what should I do today? Uh, someone asked, they said, what's the difference between the X1 and the X2? They look identical. And you're right, they do look identical. I've gone through the website. The only difference I can see is the remote control, I think. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, chuck, chuck it in the comments down below. They both have the dual 650s. They both have the standard 8 amp hour battery, same deck, different deck design. Um, you will notice the grip tape is different on this. If you go online, I'll show you a picture here what it looks like. The new deck grip is a bit cleaner, a bit more plain, no more purple and green or blue. But I think the only difference between the X1 and the X2 is the X2 comes with the new Hobbywing um, OL, OLED remote control, which is a really nice remote. But I will say there is one flaw with that remote control. And I've tried it now on, I've tried two different remotes and they both have the same flaw. It's not a flaw, it's a, it's a design issue. Is it, the battery drains really fast. This old, this old workhorse here, this classic Hobbywing remote control. Um, the battery is that good on this thing that I forget to charge it. Whereas the OLED hobby wing, which everyone's starting to move to now, which is fine, you need, you need to charge it every couple of rides. I think that screen obviously just draws so much more power. Right, that's the intro. Let's jump on the board. Let's go for a ride. Let's see how it feels. Let's see how it sounds. Uh, and we'll report back soon. All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, that intro you just saw, we shot it about four hours ago. And uh, started riding and the heavens opened and I got caught in a massive storm. I mean, you see all the sand and crap all over this. So, no filming. So, it has stopped raining now, so we're gonna try to get out and get some uh, footage. 
All right, here we go. Take two on the APSU or APSU X1. Let's see if we uh, have a little bit more luck. It is still quite grey out there. Uh, let's flick you around so you can see. It's still not perfect. The ground's a little bit wet. We should be able to get some footage in. Now, as I mentioned, this is the upgraded X1. So it's got the, the different motors, the new ESC, slightly wider belts. The X2 is exactly the same as this one, but from what I can tell, it just comes with the OLED remote. Now, oh, it's tight, these trucks are tight. Um, now, because this is Hobby Wing, silky smooth. So I can slam the brakes on. There's no, there's no surprise, there's no jolts. And you also do full acceleration and doesn't try to murder you like the, um, like the traditional old lingies. So very, very, uh, very happy with that change. And the first thing we're gonna do is a quick speed test. I've got my phone uh, on here for me, so I'll be able to read out the speeds as we go. I'm gonna start off in speed mode one. Uh, speed mode one is, again, silky smooth. 28, so that's 28 kilometers per hour we're getting. That's on the app I'm looking at my phone right now. 28 kilometers an hour, so that's the fastest speed mode one I've ever seen on a hobby wing. I think these guys have just not, I think these guys have just not restricted this. Most companies will restrict the ESCs. They'll give it plenty of amps, but they'll still speed limit it for, for safety or for, for battery preservation which can be a good thing. As I said, this has the eight amp hour, so I think these guys just wanna give you everything it's got. I'm putting the speed mode two and see if there's any difference. All right, speed mode two now. 21, 22. Plus this, then we'll go for it. All right, here we go. 27, 30, 31. 33, 34, okay. So 34 kilometers per hour in speed mode two. All right guys, I'm gonna do a quick brake test now. Just in speed mode two, I'm gonna come along here, I'm gonna turn you around, you're gonna already see, and brake. As you can tell, the brakes are a little bit weak. They're a little bit weak. They're not, they're not the worst brakes I've ever seen. That is the one, <clears throat> excuse me, that's the one advantage that the Lingy S does have. It has adjustable brakes. Even though you know, in brake mode four and three, if you slam the brakes on, it will attempt to kill you. It's so sharp and there's just no, there's just no forgiveness. It's just, it's on or off. These brakes, and it's a, it's a hobby wing symptom. It's a hobby wing thing. The brakes are generally too soft. But as long as you know that, you can adapt your riding style, um, and I've never had a problem, touch wood. So this board is uh, surprising. A nice, nice little bit of flex when you're riding. In the hood in the land, they say 50, you hot. Uh -huh. They like me, I want them to love me like they love pop. But I'm in New York, the show, they tell you I'm local. Yeah. The plan is to put the rap game in the choke uh -huh. on for the fuck this game. All right, guys, stay tuned. Part three will be coming soon. It is about to storm. The raindrops are big. So I am rushing home to beat this rain. All right, stay tuned for part three. We will do a top speed test uh, and we'll do a summary. Back soon. All right, guys, welcome back. This is chapter three. All right, guys, we're outside now. As I mentioned, APSU X1. The board has been completely and utterly soaked on the last two rides. Uh, two storms now have been caught in. Hope you can hear me okay. The mic's under the jacket. Um, the ground is still pretty wet. There's still quite a few puddles, but we'll, um, we'll see how this thing goes. Uh, we'll just go for a ride now. I'm gonna talk about a couple of things on the board. I just want to talk about uh, the deck, deck, and the wheels. 
Now, obviously for $499, this is not a, a boosted, boosted quality deck or a boosted quality wheels, but they're not bad. A very, I think the wheels are, are quite generic, but that's sometimes a good thing because they're tried and tested, especially out of all the uh, factories in China. My accent's terrible today. The deck is is the standard Vanguard clone. I think the the hero or the biggest improvement on this is definitely, as I mentioned earlier, is the ESC. It's just just very smooth. It doesn't have that massive bite like a Lingi, which some people say, well, it's a lot, it's got a lot less power, but the, the Lingi-esque bite, it's almost a little bit, oh, I'm not, I want to say, not fake. Oh, cobblestones. But it just gives you that initial bite, which really gives you a fright, but then it doesn't deliver that constant torque through the acceleration curve. Whereas the Hobby One gives you a little bit less bite, but it can delivers the same torque all the way along that acceleration curve. Um, uh, yeah, it's probably the best way I can explain it. Just doing a bit of a quick little uh, hill climb here. Quite a steep hill. We're not flying up it, but we're doing about 20k. We might make it, we might not. The road's very wet, so I'm just gonna be a little bit ginger on the corners and slow down, so I'm gonna lose a little bit of power. But yeah, we make it up there. I don't know if you could tell how steep that was, but it, it was pretty steep. So he'll climb with me, 100 kilos, tick. All right, guys, let's talk about the APSU X1. It's uh, it's going to be too wet to do a top speed test. The ground is just saturated. What I can tell you is I confidently, and I know, oh, where's the camera, sorry. Give me a second, glasses on, very bright. What I can tell you is I can guarantee you with my weight on, this board will do over 40. Uh, when I first got it, I took it on my back street, it's about 200 meters long, and I, hit, uh, I think it was like 41.5 and I wasn't on full acceleration. So it is a very, very fast board. Right, let's summarize the video really quickly and talk about the pros and cons. There are a couple of cons. Um, pros, Great, great little board. Fantastic price point, $499 US. I'm assuming they'll have discounts as well. Great ESC, Hobbywing, you know it's my favorite. Super smooth, good power. It's not the, the vanilla standard 20 amp, it's a 40 amp ESC, so it delivers nice, nice power, but without that horrible jerk that you get from the uh, Lingi. Remote control, obviously very nice. Um, battery, eight amp hour battery as standard, which is, as I mentioned in the intro, it's a great figure, eight amp hours. 10S 4P battery is a standard battery, and there's also a bigger battery you can get as well. So, big tick for that. Motors, the new motors, the 650 joules, fantastic torque, nice KV, good um, good power, takes me up hills, I'm 100 kilos, can't really say anything bad about the motors. The two things I would, so the first thing is not a big issue, um, and it's, it's I would say it's a seven out of 10, is the, the deck on this, the, the Vanguard clone. Um, it's nothing special. It has a little bit of flex, a little bit, but not much. Um, you do get a lot of the vibrations through on the road. So, I don't know, I mean, it's rideable, but with that big battery, you'd probably want it to be a little bit more, have a little more flex, just be a little bit more comfortable. But that's just my, my personal opinion. The one thing I would definitely change, and the one thing I will change on this board, are the wheels. Now these are just the uh, generic, standard, unbranded, um, Chinese ABIC clone wheels. And they're not bad, but they're only about a five out of 10. They're quite noisy. Uh, I, think, I think it's an ADA, which is quite a hard wheel. I've done, I've done about 30, 40 K on it. They still feel a little bit plasticky. I'm assuming they'll wear in. They're, they're very grippy. They're very, very grippy, which is nice, but they're quite noisy just on, um, on rough pavements and so on. So my, my biggest con on this would just be the wheels. I think they're just a little bit hard. I think if they invested a little bit more money and got slightly better wheels, Something like the, uh, like if you look at what Vareel's got with their, their boosted quality, boosted quality wheels, they're boosted. Or the Vesta, the Vesta new range, it have their Hyperlastic 78A, I think it is, or it might be in the 76. Very different from these ones. These are, these are, these are from, you know, from two years ago. That's my only, that's my only real complaint about the board is the wheels. Um, 
as I said, I'm gonna do a top speed test and film it, um, but I'll just do a quick one and put it on my Instagram. So check out my Instagram for the top speed. That'll be there in the next week or so. Uh, it's just Scott Davies uh, Eskate Reviews. And uh, from there, the next video we'll do will be the long range on this eight amp hour battery to see what I can get. I've got two boards I need to do a long range on, so I'll get myself and one of my friends to come along and they'll do the Vesta V2 Pro, which has got the six amp hour battery. I'll get, I'll, I'll get my friend who's a lighter rider, lighter rider to take that one. And I will take the uh, APSU, which is the eight amp hour battery. You can see that. Uh, we should get about the same range, I'd say, because he's about, I think about 20 kilos lighter than me. Uh, so until then, guys, don't forget, well, wear a helmet, skate safe, stay safe. Um, and guys, you know, there is light at the end of the tunnel. This corona is, uh, we're starting to beat it here in Sydney. Uh, we're, we've relaxed the lockdowns. We're at, lockdown, we're at lockdown level two now, I believe, or not quite two. You know, we can go back to cafes, up to 10 people and so on. You know, we're getting there. So guys, just keep social distancing. Listen to your local governments. Get out and have a skate if you can. Uh, and if you've got any questions or comments on what you'd like to see next, comment down below. Add me on Instagram, send me a DM, I always reply. Uh, quite a few people have been DMing me a lot lately about the Vestar, about the Vestar Blackhawk and the Varel RS. We've been having some really good long conversations. Uh, so feel free to reach out with any questions or any concerns or anything you want to know. I'm more than happy to help. All right guys, skate safe and we'll see you on the next video.